Okay, this is a little bit of a doozy. I'm going to try to move quick because there's a lot in here. Um, this is a triangle. Okay, and these are the midpoints of each of the sides. Okay, using the midpoint tool. And then using the segments, if I connect a midpoint to a, the opposite vertex, I create what's called a median. So this is a median of this triangle. Right? The midpoint of side BC connected to the opposite vertex. Same thing here. Mid side of midpoint of side AB connected to C. And the midpoint of side AC connected to the opposite side B. And I want you to notice something. And it may not be really easy to see at first. Uh, maybe if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see it a little bit. Nope, not going to work that way. Okay, so basically what you can see is that it, if you look real close, it appears that they all meet at the same point. All meet at the same point. Well, what happens if I change my triangle? Well, I can change my triangle. It doesn't really matter. Those medians all meet at the same point. This is called a point of concurrency. Okay, it's called a point of concurrency. So what is a point of concurrency? Well, to concur, what does it mean to concur? To concur means I agree. You'll hear people say, you know, when they're speaking real formally, maybe in court or something, uh, they'll say, uh, you know, your honor, I concur with the previous statement, which means I agree with the previous statement. So when lines concur, they agree. And what that means is they meet at a point. There is a place where they agree. Um, and so the point of concurrency of the medians of a triangle appears to exist. There appears to be a point of concurrency where these medians all meet no matter how you draw that line. That's interesting, isn't it? So this is what we sometimes call the median concurrency theorem. Okay, let's write that out. And we're going to make this actually the median concurrency theorem. All right, that a point exists, that a point of concurrency exists for any triangles medians okay and I just put that there that's kind of that's kind of a big deal right you say any triangle you draw no matter how you draw it if we make the median which is you know the midpoint of this segment to the opposite vertex if we make all those medians they're always gonna meet and you know it, it, we can see it does appear to be true you know it does appear that in all cases that it is true but can we prove it so this is a tough one to prove a little bit uh, well not so much if you really like algebra but there is a lot of algebra involved we're gonna do a coordinate proof here so sharpen your pencil and uh, get your eraser ready and I would recommend you do this one by hand in take your time and do a good job with good penmanship so it can be read and understood. I've typed this out and I'm very good with my equation editor, very quick, and it still took me probably an hour to type out. Um, and I didn't even type all of it out. So let's just see um, what I did. I want to show you what I did here. Okay, and we'll go there. So the first thing you have to do is whenever you're going to prove something for all triangles, you cannot use numbers. Numbers represent actual values that cannot be changed. And what you're creating then is an example. You're not creating a proof. I want to prove it for all triangles, regardless of where they're at. So we can place one point at a numbered location, which is the convenient location of the plane, which is going to be 0, 0. And another point can be on that same axis. That's fine. So this is on the x-axis, b. So it has a y value of 0. But we cannot pick a number for x here, an x value for a point b. So we're going to call that 2a. And the reason we call it 2a is because I'm going to be looking for the median. That means I need the midpoint of this segment. And the midpoint of the segment is going to be a lot easier to find if the value right here is 2a than if it was a or some other generic uh, variable. Because when I divide a, I get to 1 half a. 
and then I have to start dealing with fractions and they're ugly. If I start with 2a, then my midpoint is going to be at a, and that's really nice. Notice that I place c at a convenient place. We don't know where b is. b could be out here. It could be back there. We don't know where c is. It could be up there. It could be down there, but we're going to place point c at a location 2b units from the origin on the x-axis and 2c units from the origin on the y-axis. And then we use our midpoint formula. So the midpoint of AB is found by adding together the X's of A and B, dividing in half, and then adding together the Y's of A and B, and dividing them in half. And you can see here that I've, I've plugged in the X's of A, there's 0, and B, there's 2A right there, plugged in, add them together, get 2A, divide in half, and I just get A, right? And the Y's of A and B are 0 and 0, and I add them together, and I get 0 divide in half and I get zero. So my midpoint, which I'm going to call D, which would be exist somewhere here, has the coordinates A, zero, and that's going to be midpoint D. Now I continue that for side AC. In AC, I calculated and plugged in all the coordinates and I simplified it. And I got down and I called that midpoint E. So midpoint E would be here and the median is going to be from E to B, right? Just like the median here was going to be from D to C, the opposite vertex. Now the last one would be side BC, and I calculate it for BC as well. I plug in the values for B and C, and I uh, use the midpoint formula, and I find this point over here I'm going to call F. So my last median goes from A to F, okay? The next trick, because I really what I need is I need equations. I need equations for those each of those segments of those lines. And so to start with, the easiest way for me to find the equation is to use the slope formula. And so I get the slope formula out, which as you might remember is the difference in y's, right? y minus y on top of x minus x, the difference in x. So this is our rise. You know how we change direction on the y-axis goes on top, our rise over our run, how we change on the x-axis there. So rise over run. You can see that there. That's how we calculate the slope. And so I plug in the numbers for DC, and I calculate my slope for DC, and it's kind of an ugly result, but I've simplified it as much as I can. Then I do the same thing for EB, remembering the points EB, the actual values we calculated for E and set for B. And I plug those in, and I simplify as much as I can, and then I get the slope for EB, and I do the same thing for A and F, and FA, and I plug those values in and simplify. Now I've got the, it's a, it's a, woo, lots of work so far. I've got the midpoints and I found the slopes, and now I'm going to use the, uh, use the point slope form to write the equation of the line. This is the reason for finding the slope first. The point slope form of the equation of the line looks like this. We put the, we put the slope here, and we do x minus one of the x values and y minus one of the y values. And I'm just putting in d, so it could be x of d and y of d, but it just as easily could have been c, x of c and y of c. We would get the same uh, equation. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't change anything um, if I wanted to do it that way. So, you know, here I have put in the slope for dc. There's the x value for d and the y value for d. Um, you remember D was that midpoint that existed at A, 0. So you can see I plug that in. Notice the X and the Y stays right there, but this is my equation right here. And, you know, I might simplify it. Y minus 0 is just Y. So there it is a little bit simplified, right? Um, then I can do the same thing for E and B and put in the slope, substitute the values, uh, whatever I substituted in here for point E, and then did it again for FA and I uh, simplified that down as much as possible. So now I have three uh, lines, three equations of a line, right? And now the key is to you know, think about those lines as a system of linear equations. If I can prove that there is a solution to the system of linear equations that exists, that means that there must be a point um, that solves. Now, you can do this by hand. And I'll just tell you that if you want to go on deep into math in your college career, maybe be a math professor someday, it will not hurt you to spend the extra hour probably to 
whatever it might take you to work it out um, and solve the system by hand. For the majority of my students, however, they're you know not they're they're not too shy about maybe saying that you know um, they're not going to someday teach math or that they're not too worried about that. And and I have to tell you anyway, in the future, it is very very likely that um, that that. Uh, you will not have to do this by hand much at all anymore because the computers can do this for us and they do a much better job of it than than humans do anymore so it's good practice it's good to know it but this is not an algebra class this is a geometry class I would say feel fine to use a computer algebra system to let it solve that system for you and that's what I'm going to do so um, let me pull up my calculator Okay, so again, what we have here is we have um, our TI Inspire calculator. I'm turn the light on for a second. You can see it's the CX CAS version. You can only do this on the CAS version. This is the computer algebra system version, um, and not all calculators have that. Uh, even there is a TI Inspire CX version only. Um, if it has the CAS version, it's not allowed on the ACT. It is allowed on the SAT. Um, and someday soon, I hope and expect that it will be allowed on the ACT as well. Um, but that's uh, an argument for another day. So what we've done here is we've defined some variables. Um, I used the command define, and I typed in you know a name for the variable. Line one is equal to, and I put in the value, and then I uh, hit enter, and it told me, okay, I know what line one is. It says done. And I did the same thing for line two, and I did the same thing for line three. So now what I'm going to try and do, let's hope it works, is I'm going to see if I can find a point of concurrency between, um, by solving a system of equations, can I find a point of concurrency um, for line one and line two? Let's try that. So if I put line one in here, L-I-N-E, one that is my first equation and line two I do this you know type define those variables so I don't have to keep typing this every time and I can find that there is a solution and you notice there is a criteria here that we cannot have the value in the denominator be equal to zero um, and that's just to make sure that uh, we do not have anything that could possibly have um, a zero in a denominator. But basically you can see that as long as x is equal to a plus b over three and y is equal to two c over three, then that would be a point that um, would be on both line one and line two. Well, what about line one and line three? So let's um, try that. If I go up with my calculator, hit enter, that'll come down and I can just change this variable from line two, I'll make that line three, and I hit enter, and notice I got the same solution. Yes, so it tells me that same point will work for one, two, and three, and just to be, you know, kind of obnoxious about it, I'm going to go ahead and confirm that it is a solution for both line two and line three, we should get the exact same point, which we do. So this is enough for me. What I would do is I would take a picture of my solutions, you know, show that, you know, show all this work and take some pictures and publish them in as digital artifacts in your proof. Um, you'll have that alongside your handwritten, you know, how did you calculate the midpoint? How did you calculate the slope? How did you calculate the formula that represents those medians? And then here's how the calculator proved to me that there was a solution that existed. It is the same solution point that exists for all three lines. Therefore, there is a point of concurrency for all three medians of the triangle, and that is for any triangle, regardless of where the coordinates are. My coordinate proof is done. Go ahead and get yours done and publish it in your binder, and I'd make a move note on this one since it's a big one. Make sure you add in as much detail from your own memory of what your understanding is of how you did this because you will need to make an oral defense of this and it'll be better for you if you uh, speak it out while you still remember how you did it and then later on you refresh by going back and listening to yourself.